This lesson will introduce you to the main components of the FCX2000. So as we go through the lessons, you'll be familiar with each when they are described in detail. The FCX2000 is available in three sizes, each referenced by the available cutting area on the table. The cutting area of the FCX2060 is approximately 36 by 24 inches. The FCX2120, being 36 by 48 inches, and the FCX2180 at 36 by 72 inches. This is the tool carriage, which is able to carry two tools at the same time. This allows for two different operations to be done within the same job, such as cutting and creasing. The tool holders are labeled 1 and 2. Tool holder 1 has the lighter force of the two with a maximum downforce pressure of 500 grams. It is used for most cutting applications as well as pen plotting. Tool holder 2 has a downforce pressure of up to 1 kilogram, which is used for creasing as well as cutting rigid, thick materials. The tool carriage is attached to what is called the Y-bar. The Y-bar carries the tool carriage left and right, while the tool carriage will move up and down on the Y-bar. The table is the control panel, where commands and settings are input. Just above the control panel is the emergency stop switch. When pressed, it will immediately halt all operation. This area is a useful utility space for storing supplies such as your blade holder, creaser, scissors, and tape. Located on the far right side of the table is the media stock roller. This is where rolls of media up to 11 pounds can be loaded. The power switch is located underneath the table on the left side facing the front, as well as the USB flash memory port, where a USB flash drive containing plot files can be accessed by the cutter using the control panel. This allows the FCX2000 to operate independently and free your computer to work on other projects. Offline USB operation will be discussed in greater detail in the lesson on advanced cutting operations. USB, Ethernet, and RS-232C communication ports are located underneath on the back side of the table. Finally, the vacuum pump and switch are placed on the floor. Simply press the pedal to turn the vacuum pump on or off. Taking a closer look at the control panel, it has a large 3.7 inch graphic LCD screen for intuitive operation. The display shows everything that the plotter is thinking, the status, menu options, etc. The four keys labeled one through four are on the right side of the display screen. When menu options appear on the screen, some of them will have a dark icon number indicating that pressing that number will access that particular option. This will become apparent as we progress through the lessons. The four arrow position buttons serve two purposes. First, they allow the tool head to be moved. For instance, pressing the left arrow key will move the tool head to the left, and pressing the up arrow key will move the tool in the upward direction. If you would like to move at a slower speed than the default setting, hold the slow key and any directional keys at the same time. This provides a method to move the tool head with extra precision when necessary. Pressing two arrow keys at once will move the tool head diagonally. The origin key works in conjunction with the position keys. Once the tool head is moved to a new location, the origin key can be pressed to designate where we want the cutter to start the next job. Everything will cut above and to the right of the current tool position. The second purpose for the arrow keys is for changing settings and adjusting values within the menu options. For instance, here we have to adjust the tool type. To change the tool type, we simply press the up or down arrow key.
The pause menu key either suspends the operation of the cutter and or places it in menu mode. When the FCX2000 is in the middle of a cutting operation, pressing pause, suspend the cutting, and this menu will appear. Here we are given a choice to either continue the job or quit the job altogether. When the FCX2000 is not in the middle of a cutting operation, in other words it has a status of ready, pressing the pause key will illuminate the indicator light next to the key and places the cutter in menu mode. In this mode, the display will show seven menu options to choose from. Tool, Arms, Area, Interface, Advanced, Test, and Memory. Each of these will be discussed in later lessons, but to access any of these menu options, simply press the corresponding icon. For instance, press 1 for Tool, 2 for Arms, 3 for Area the up arrow key for interface, and so on. Let's press 1. The menu displays four different choices for tool settings. Once again, these icons represent the key to be pressed to access that choice. Also, notice in the upper right corner a 1 slash 4 appears. This indicates that you are viewing the first of four pages of options. We can cycle through the pages by pressing the up arrow key. Pressing the down arrow key will give us the previous set of options. Each menu that you access will always show what keys need to be pressed to get you there. For instance, in this menu, let's say we want to turn on data sorting. We press the 2 key to access the data sorting menu. Currently it is off. To turn data sorting on, we just press the 1 key then press 2 or 3 for the type of data sorting or 1 to turn it off once again. The conditions test key will be discussed in the lesson basic cutting operations. These conditions are adjustable presets for different types of material or different types of cutting. The FCX2000 allows for two different overall configurations. These are called user because each configuration is set for an individual operator. These dual configurations contain all of the settings of the cutter independently of each other. This is particularly useful when there are multiple operators who may work with different materials. There is user 1 and user 2. The current user is indicated by the light next to the user key. This is also indicated on the screen when the cutter is in ready mode. To switch between users, press the user key once, and this warning message will appear letting us know that this will change the condition. Press 1 for yes, or escape for no. In this case, we'll press the escape key to leave it on user 1. The copy button takes the job that is currently in the buffer and processes it again. In addition to creating copies for the same product, the copy key can also be useful when cutting the same job on several different types of media, where each one needs a different cutting condition. To do this from the computer, you'd have to manually resend the job each time. As you make changes, you may want to cancel something you input. Pressing the escape key will cancel the setting change and return to the previous screen. The Enter key is used extensively to accept a certain change in settings that have been adjusted. For instance, once a value is adjusted as in the case here, pressing the Enter key will designate the cutter to accept this new setting. Once again, if the Escape key or another key was pressed, the cutter would revert back to the original value automatically. The menus will always indicate which key to press in order to return to a previous menu. You can also view this structure in the A4 section of the user's manual. Finally, please keep in mind that while we will be discussing a wide variety of useful options, this video is not inclusive.